Tony Grant Films of America and live from the GMB Show Studio. This is your work, Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show. Doesn't that sound exciting to you? Welcome back, Shadow Nation! Welcome back to the one, the only, mystifying Oracle Radio, your Ghost Man and Demon Hunter show, Demon Hunter. That's me. What's going on, buddy? Oh, you know, I'm a little excited. A little, uh, it's a bi- uh, hey, it's a big night. It's a big night, huh? I, I'm, uh, I put on my best dress and uh, me I did too. my hair just perfect. Me too. Hey, special thanks to all our homes, all our sponsors, Stitcher, Smart Radio, Planet Paranormal, Action Audio Apps. Hey! Are you listening? They want to know, so check them out at actionaudioapps.com. Our buddies in Canada, Paranormal A, thanks for everything, guys. Thanks for being so cool. Cool. They're so cool, man. So cool. So cool. What a great bunch of people. It's from all that cold air up in Canada. It is. We're so excited tonight, guys, (laughs) for the super show of the century in a galaxy far, far away. (laughs) We we were late going on the air. (laughs) Six minutes, actually. Six minutes? Yes, we are. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. We're six minutes late, man. We were too excited. We were too excited. We peaked too soon. But we are back, guys. And in case you were wondering, this is the Mystifying Oracle Radio, the one and only established in 2006. And we bring you the best in the paranormal and Hollywood from the paranormal-type movies. Walking Dead. Woohoo! And uh, soon to come, many more. Is. Yes, we've been doing a lot. So what's going on, man? Uh, what's happening out your side of the town? Oh, you know, it's May Day, Sean. It is. Well, depends on how you follow May Day. Today's May Day. <laughs> okay. It, it, it's, it surprises me. You know, I, I do move through those circles where, you know, all the little witch groups and my friends who are pagans and all that, I hear from them constantly and everybody's celebrating May Day today, May 3rd. And I always thought May Day was May 1st. Yeah. Because here in America, it's celebrated on May 1st. And uh, no, today they're celebrating it. I guess uh, I guess everything's aligned yeah. so that today is May Day. No, oh, I didn't know. I know it's beautiful outside, man. So everybody's running around the little Maypoles, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. with the little ribbons ducking in and out of each other. Maypoles. And, uh, that just sounds dirty. Maypoles. Maypoles. Well, you know, it, what it was a symbol for. I mean, they'd dance around the pole, and at the end, they'd uh, throw a uh, wreath over the top, and it yeah. should slide d- down the bottom all the way once you're finished. So uh, guess what that's a symbol of? <laughs> that sounds like a phallic symbol to me. <laughs> phallic, sexy thing. I don't like where your mind goes, Mr. Burris. It's been going there for how long? Not working on nine years now? It's what gets us the ratings, buddy. Anyway. Oh, okay. It's not incredible, incredible guests that you get. No, no, absolutely. Um, Anyway, guys, if we have any new people tuning in uh, tonight, like I said, this is the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter show. This is Nathan on the other side of the microphone and me, Uh Ghost Man Sean B. That's uh, Ghost Man and Demon Hunter. And, um, yeah, this is a pretty epic show tonight. I guess we should go ahead and, I don't know. What do you think? stuff? Say, uh... How about tonight's guest? Tonight's guest, Sean! Go ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, oh, that's music to my ears. It actually is music. Tonight! The problem is now Sean has to read the teletype <laughs> as it flies away from it. Yes, in a galaxy far, far away. The tonight's guest! He's an English actor best known for his legendary, iconic role as the bounty hunter Boba Fett from the original Star Wars trilogy. He's worked on numerous TV and film projects, including Doctor Who and Robin of Sherwood, just to name a few. Please help us welcome to studio tonight, when he stops by, Mr. Jeremy Bullock. Huh? The original Bobo Fett from a galaxy not too far away tonight, actually. It's going to be here, guys. It's a little far away. Yeah, kind of. Get your lightsabers out. Get ready. Because we're bringing him here. First time, Star Wars comes to the home of the Mystifying Oracle Radio Ghostman and Demon Hunter show tonight with actor Jeremy Bullock. Boba Fett. I just, you know, I just wanted to call him Boba Fett. (laughs) 
Boba Fett. Boba Fett. That, uh, it was Why hard would you to, call him Boba Fett? I don't know. When we were just, you know, we were talking to Jeremy, uh, you know, earlier, saying hey to him and uh, checking the lines and everything, I, I was going to call him Booby Fett. I don't know why. I was so excited. I was so excited. You, you are just a strange man. Didn't you say you have a official uh, Boba Fett doll in your studio? No, 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 no. I, I uh, was telling you how one of my bosses used to have the full-size body one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't anymore. You don't work for uh, that guy anymore. I don't work for him anymore. He probably still has it. Uh, he owns Priceline, so. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you know how we, uh, each week, we try to find new cool things on the show to talk about that are trending? Trending? trending. What's that mean, Sean? That's the, the word all the kids are talking about now. They're saying trending. Trending means Facebook, Twitter, stuff going on. Study shows that beards contain more poo than some toilets. Did you read this? I did not. Since we and my both... beard has no poo in it. Right. <laughs> well, this article might change your mind because I got a full Abraham Lincoln type beard myself. So I was outraged. So after this, we might be able to start, uh, you know, rioting or, or whatever in the streets. But uh, study shows that beards contain more poo than some toilets. Are you ready? I don't believe it, but go ahead. Beards are something that have been around since the dawn and t- dawn of time they put and time and these days you can see them on both old dudes and young hipsters 20 somethings uh after seeing a study done by k-o-a-t in albuquerque they might want to reach for the razor i'm still not going to reach for the razor they put the pictures of the biggest dirtiest bums on here too with <laughs> okay. well you know i i shave my beard off like twice a year sean so uh this might convince me that it's time. It might. Let's check it out. Apparently, it is not just food that can get caught in facial hair. With beards, one of the most uh, unhygienic things you could actually have on your face, uh, with microbiologists claiming that there are more germs and bacteria in a beard than around a toilet. <laughs> How's that? I wash my beard every day like I wash my hair. Why would you tell this story? My wife will never kiss me again. Well, that's true. Some of the beards even contained actual poo. And it is very, pretty grim viewing, and I don't even have facial hair. And they're talking about, apparently they had a poo scanner, and they went through these guys' beards, and they found fecal matter. Oh. Here's the question I have, uh, and that comes from Unilad TV. Thanks, guys. But uh, <laughs> what these guys not wash their hands? Apparently not. And they scratch their beard? I mean, what are you, you know, are birds landing in it and nesting? Or is it human feces? What are they talking about here? Uh, I need to know what they're talking about. I, I you know, it's got to be those kind of guys who just don't wash their hands. Yeah. You know, maybe the, the occasional dad who changes a diaper, but yeah, I, I just can't see that, Sean. I can't see people actually not washing their hands when they're done in the bathroom. I mean, I have to wash my hands when I touch money. All of a sudden, my fingers feel dirty and I got to go wash. And right. Of course, I have OCD, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, that that was another uh, cool story I want to throw out there. Since we have beards, and they're right, the hipsters, but we're not hipsters. We have beards, but uh, apparently we're just old. hipsters need to wash their hands. Or they probably went out in the street and got a hobo or something, you know, that had no toilet paper, and he just didn't wash his hands. He just rubbed it in his beard. Anyway, there you go. War of Poopy Beard. Instead of black beard. Tw- hey, 25 unexpected things that are dirtier than your toilet. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that the toilet has gotten a bad rap, they say. Uh, we all shun it as the dirtiest part of the house. When in reality, there are a lot of supposedly clean places, Nathan. I've heard, I've heard people say, you have a potty mouth. So yeah, exactly. right there, there's one. That are filthier. A lot of clean, supposed clean places that are filthier than the toilets. These are 25 unsuspected or unexpected things. That are dirtier than your toilet. Are you ready? I am always ready. Ice! Huh? Yeah, they say ice is dirtier than your toilet. Apparently, when you go to restaurants, stuff like that, the chances, the probability of the people, you know, filling your glasses up with ice or touching the cups or whatever contaminate the ices. And the ice is more prone to picking up the bacteria. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. As you know, I've had... 101 million jobs uh, in my lifetime. Yeah. And one of them, I had to get my Serve Safe Management Certificate, which means uh, I'm 
able to run a kitchen because I know how to keep a kitchen clean. Okay. I had to take the class and pass the test and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I try and get through everybody's head is ice is food. Yeah. You treat ice the same way you treat food you're putting on a plate. You don't touch it. You don't, uh, you know, you don't grab it with your hands and put it in. You don't take a cup and scoop down into the ice with it. It it's, picks up bacteria very easily, as you said. And it also, because of our skin being warmer than it is, when we touch it, we, you know, you, know, you all know the story of the little boy who, puts his tongue to the flagpole. Yeah, it's in the Christmas story. Right. Well, that's because the cold touching his warm skin cells attach. And because it's so cold, his whole tongue sticks. Well, same thing happens with ice. You pick up a piece of ice with your fingers, you leave bits and pieces of yourself on that ice when you put it in the cup. So. Right, right. So Bad news, ice. Don't, t don't touch the ice. Don't touch my ice, man. With your dirty hands. Up your butt, Joe Boo. <laughs> hey, a study of fast food restaurants in the U.S. found that 70% of the ice served had more bacteria than the toilet water. 70%. So now they're just going to make ice out of toilet water. Well, now you got a, a lot of the... You Why know. is my ice blue? Right. This is blue and it tastes minty. But they... Uh, the, the, the kids that they're hiring do not properly sanitize or clean out those ice machines. You never think about yeah. that. Yeah. They don't know how or haven't been trained to do. Or I, I used to make the one the people who worked for me clean it out with boiling hot water Yeah, like every night. Well, why not? Absolutely. Restroom floors, number 24. Well, I would think that. No real surprise here. Public restrooms have about 2 million bacteria per square inch. The average toilet seat has only 50 Per square inch. Right, can you imagine that? All the that's why people take their shoes off in your house, man. Come on. Yeah, and it's also why it always freaks me out when you're at the beach uh, or at the public pool or something like that, and somebody walks into the public restroom barefoot. Yeah. It just freaks me out. I don't know how they can manage do that. I, I things are crawling on you right now, and you don't even know it. How many times in in the course of your long working history have you had a a, a job with a desk, your own desk, a place you go? Oh. Your of course, it's happened many a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, number 23, the average desk has 400 times more bacteria than a toilet. This is why you should never eat lunch at your desk. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Think about all the stuff we could have got infected by, huh? As soon as that virus, that zombie virus comes out, we're dead, man. Well, all the people with desks are going to be the first ones to go. I know. Keyboards, something I use every day. Keyboards can have up to 200 times more bacteria than toilet seats. There you go. Cell phones. Oh, oh yeah, they're horrible. Yeah. With working in kitchens, I never let people carry their cell phones in the kitchen because, you know, they're in the middle of p making food, and all of a sudden they pull their their phone out. I know, man. What are, are you talking about? They're, they're, they're contaminating everything. Especially in today's world where every five seconds you get a text to tell people how important your life is, right? Our mobile exactly. devices can have ten times more bacteria than toilet seats. And they're always touching our faces. Would you wipe the inside of your toilet bowl with your cheek? That's what they ask you. Ugh. That's nasty, man. That is sickening. I can't handle that. That was uh, that was number 21, in case you were wondering there. It, it's already making me ill. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here's another one. Um, da, 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 da. Restaurant menus. Okay. Yeah, that makes kind of sense. There are an average 100 times more bacteria on restaurant menus than on restaurant toilet seats. <laughs> that is crazy. Chopping boards. These babies actually have a lot more poop smeared on them than your toilet does. Oh! Raw meat apparently carries a very high level of fecal bacteria. Well, think about what uh, happens to people when they die. The butcher shops, uh, yeah. you know, stuff comes out. Oh, man. Up your butt, That's Joe crazy. Boo. <laughs> Up your butt, man. Toothbrushes. That's... Wait, I put those in my mouth. Right. Well, you might want to think twice about it. When you flush your toilet, the germs can travel up to six feet and linger for up to two hours. A lot of them up end up on toothbrushes. So how is your, oh. toilet... Yeah, how's your toilet cleaner than your brush if that's where the germs come from? Stick around to find out. Well, this is actually why I turn my toothbrush upside down 
and keep it inside the cup upside down. Yes. It's uh, it's one that the toothbrush hangs inside the cup so that nothing is around it. Uh-huh. A well, my, stupid uh, little thing, but that's why I started doing that. Yeah. My toothbrush is safely hidden in the cabinet, bathroom cabinet. So Safely hidden. You have children, man. Your daughter cleans the toilet with that toothbrush. <laughs> Probably. Uh, carpets with 200,000 bacteria per square inch. Carpets are 4,000 times dirtier than a toilet seat. Humans shed 1.5 million skin cells every hour, which helps feed the bacteria in carpets. Did you check that? 1.5 million skin cells an hour. Thank you. That's the only way I lose weight, man. Oh, man. Refrigerator, number 16. Most fridges test positive for E. coli. Of course they do. Yeah. Well, that's great. You knew that. <laughs> Your fridge test. I don't want to eat, brush my teeth. The only thing I'm doing from now on is using the bathroom because that's apparently the only clean room in my house. Right. You might as well sit in there. Eat off the toilet. 15 reusable shopping bags. I don't do 15? this. I don't. Yeah, I don't reuse. Oh, 15. I thought you were saying 15 reusable shopping bags. I don't know how many. We're going through uh, the count, you know. We're going through the How many? Can I, <laughs> can I use two? <laughs> your reusable shopping bags have more fecal matter than your underwear because <laughs> you're at least wash that. That's terrible. That's nuts. TV remote, kind of like cell phone. In many households, this is one of the dirtiest items you can handle. Well, of course. Haven't you ever sat down in your chair and realized it was underneath you? I mean, oh, man. Doorknobs. Well, I, tend, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of people when they go to the restroom, they use clean wipes, sanitizing wipes, not the kind that stings, but things that will clean themselves. So you don't, you know, track fecal matter on the furniture, apparently. I don't know. I, You know what? Wash your hands for 20 seconds with hot water and soap, and soap folks, please. Number 13, doorknobs. But I touch them every day. I know. Hands are one of the dirtiest parts of the body, and most people use them to open their doors. Number 12, light switch, Nathan. These can have up to 217 bacteria per square inch. <sighs> Number 11, kitchen sink. Forget the toilet. Today reported not ago, not long ago, today's magazine, uh, how your sink could easily be dirtier than your entire bathroom. Oh, oh, oh. I'm yeah. feeling nauseous. That's where you wash your vegetables and stuff. Number 10. Dishes, everything, yeah. Number 10, bathtub. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I never use one of those. This is true. The place you go to get clean may not be your first place you think of when you consider bacteria, but the area around the drain can have up to 19,468 bacteria per square inch. That's nuts, man. I'll be disinfecting everything after the use of everybody in the house now. <laughs> Number 9, pillow. Dead skin cells, dust mites, fungal spores, pollens, and other body secretions are all floating around in the place you stick your head at night. Mattress, of course. Did you know that after 10 years, your mattress will nearly double in weight thanks to the number of dust mites and dust mite poop that has been collected? That, that's lovely. I'm going foam. Okay. <laughs> Posturpedic. I'm <getting> a foam mattress. <laughs> it's a posturpedic. It's rising off the floor. No, that's dust mite poop. Pet food bowl, of course, right? Well, yeah. The inside rim alone contains 2,110 bacteria per square inch. Number six, this is something we use every day, money. Oh, yeah. Like I said, grosses me out. I touch money, I got to go wash my hands. Yeah, bank notes, and even your hand stinks after a while. Bank notes can have up to 200,000 bacteria. It's a good idea to wash your hands after directly handling cash. I, 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 I can gladly see? handle that bacteria. Thank you. Uh, it, it pays to be a germaphobe. See that? Yeah, it does until they come with the white suits and <gasps> you're scraping your skin off. Draperies. Magnets for pet fur, mold, dander, debris, and dust mites. These things just sit there unsuspectingly soaking it all up. That's why I took all mine down. I just have shutters now. Right. <laughs> it's just <laughs> open windows. Like when I first moved into the, the house here. Uh, we didn't have the... You had to have special word of the blinds because we have the old school big windows. So... I felt so uncomfortable because people were just walking down the street checking you out while you're watching TV. Anyway, number well, four. Stop watching TV naked. Yeah, I know. That's my decision. Number four, shower heads. You'd think the water coming out of the spigot designed to clean your body would actually be clean, right? Oh, no. Well, apparently, the warm, dark, and moist insides of the shower heads are perfect breeding grounds for bacteria. Oh, As I you let the water go in now. your mouth and all that. Oh, Number three, uh, number three, 
handbags. Notoriously dirty, they usually contain your phone, money, and other things that after reading this list, you should give you an idea of why you want to clean your handbag. Number two. Inside your handbag is actually a miniaturized version of the movie of, uh, oh, what was that movie with all the blue people? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, Avatar. Avatar. Yeah, Avatar. Avatar. There's, a, there's an entire little micro world of Avatar inside your handbag. Yeah, they're like, oh, no, it's the giant hand. <laughs> Every time you reach in there, kind of like a men in black thing. Remember the foot locker they had? And they were all worshiping the clock and stuff. Anyway, think about all the time when you were at church or something when you were little and you asked mom for a mint that was just floating around the bottom of her purse. Uh. Huh? And you ah. snack down on it or the piece of bubble gum or something. <laughs> Those Werther's Originals. Oh, God. They were full of poop. Anyway. <laughs> Number two. Oh, is this a good childhood memory? Number two, kitchen sponges. In oh, their... yeah. I throw them out like oh, every two weeks. i got to get rid of them. funky, man. In nearly every part of the world, this is notoriously the dirtiest thing in the house. With 10 million bacteria per square inch. <sighs> Your kitchen sponge is nearly a quarter of a million times dirtier than your toilet seat, having absorbed the fecal matter of everything from humans to cows, as well as a multitude of other much more terrifying bacteria. We would highly recommend that you change your sponge like right now. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think number one is, sir? Number one. Hold on. I see. don't know. Do you have a drum roll? Do we have a drum uh... roll? This was a long process. Is that the drum roll? Yeah. It was yeah. cheesy. So number one. It says, so how is the toilet seat so clean, question mark? That's wanting to tell you why, I guess. It's pretty simple, really. We actually clean the toilet because we generally think of the toilet as being dirty. We clean it with all sorts of chemicals, toothbrushes, kitchen sponges, and cell phones, on the other hand, are cleaned rarely, if at all. There you go. But what was number one? I'm sorry, I was drumming. That was it. It said the toilet. It's a question, actually, number one. So how's the toilet seat so clean? It says because we clean it all the time because we generally think it's dirty when actually everything else around us is. Yeah. That reminds me. Let me make sure my poop-covered cell phone is on mute right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, it it, it's interesting. You know how we were talking about money freaks me out so badly. I can't touch it. Right. Up until, uh, you know, I think it was the late 1980s, early 1990s when they switched over the bills and started making the big face bills. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that. That money was printed with antibacterial it. ink right, to help cut down on the bacteria being transferred by money. Right, right. But how long, you know, think about every time you pick up a bill that's from like 1990 or whatever. How long is that money around and how long is that ink going to keep fighting bacteria? Oh so they God. stopped doing it. Yeah. You know, well, they should reconsider again. Reconsider doing that. So anyway, that's why, that's that's the... why I launder all my money. That number one was kind of weird. So uh, apparently they finished with the sponge. Number one was the sponge, and the real number one that they gave you was a question. So the beard thing has me worried, though. I'm looking at my beard right now thinking, oh, my God. You will, that will, you will start washing your hands extra well now when you leave the bathroom, Sean. And, uh, uh, I always wash my hands well, man. We have but, sanitizer and scrub brush. Just don't touch your beard. When you come out of the bathroom anymore. The thing you're not going to get away from is human beings were filthy well, animals. <laughs> th think about it, though. They were saying how, filthy animal. you know, think about your beard. It, it's des designed to catch things. Yeah. It, it really is. It's there to protect you. Yeah. And uh, they were just saying when you flush the toilet, fecal matter goes six feet. All right. So do you All step right. six feet away from the toilet when you flush it? I do. Actually, I step six feet away. I don't know. What do you measure and tape to see how far yeah, you're, you you're standing right next to the toilet. You're half the time you got to bend over to flush it. That fecal matter comes right up and catches you in the face. So I've used the restroom at your house. So I have your fecal matter on my clothes somewhere. Is that what you're saying? You're a very lucky man, man. <laughs> I, I oh, poop man. gold. That is terrible. I want a biggie fries. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, when you came to, you came and stayed with me when I still had the bungalow. Oh and, yeah, that's uh, true. that place was filthy. <laughs> that's because <laughs> I had a stream that rolled under it, and it, everything turned to mold. One day after you'd you'd clean everything, the next day everything was moldy. That was nuts, man. Only in Connecticut could you pay thousands of dollars a month for uh, a, a house that 
Half designed to grow mold. That's crazy, man. Hey, did you hear about the uh, man with two penises and the woman with two uh, vaginas? Oh, this was okay. actually in the news, man. This was actually on... the woman with two vaginas was in the news. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Is this she so... had one kidney and two vaginas? I think it was. I don't. One kidney. Are we are we working to see how many times we can say vagina in this broadcast? Yeah, I think so. I think we can say it's a medical term, vagina. Oh, okay. So if uh, the Shadow Nation is offended, please turn off the show at this point. Meet the man with two penises and a woman with two. We already covered it. So apparently having two genitalia is the in thing nowadays, Nathan. Really? As a guy with two penises and a woman with two vajayjays are both making headlines around the world. We need this kind of coverage. Why can't you grow two things so we can <laughs> get more promotion in chat room, folks? Who says I don't? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, one chap has two fully formed and functional penises and goes by the name The Phallic Dude. <laughs> That's it. The Phallic Dude. D-I-P-H-A. You get it, right? Okay. Yes. Or Double D Dude. Yeah, I can't say that. His identity is secret, but he has revealed he is an American man in his mid-20s. He did an AMA on Reddit last year, which turned out to be one of the most popular ever, and even released a book on Christmas Day called Doubleheader. <laughs> oh, uh, my my godson is listening to the show tonight because he wants to tear <laughs> Boba Fett. You just told him it at eight, man. Don't ever listen at the beginning. If you're a kid, anyway. Eddie, EJ, I'm sorry. <laughs> they don't know what that means, guys. Doubleheader, it's a baseball game, guys. It's a book about baseball. My life with two, you know. In an interview with BBC Newsfeed, he explained that his parents told him he was special and unique. I'd say so, pal. Anyway, initially I didn't want to uh, I didn't want people in school to know because I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. That's what he's saying. <laughs> I didn't want other guys to be jealous or feel bad. He'd get me on show everybody I'd be like, look at this. Anyway, uh, he didn't want people to feel bad uh, that they didn't have to. It was never put into my head. He says they might hate me because I had to, or they might think, yeah, you notice I'm editing as I go the story. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, too. And he, I, he, he uh, said that he didn't want people to hate him because he had to. They might think I was weird. It didn't get out until a girl I'd been seeing had been interested in going all the way. I hadn't thought about it, and I was trying to avoid it. It wasn't until then that I thought she might not be able to handle this. It might freak her out. <laughs> huh? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, man. my. What a man. What a man, what a man, what a man. You can go to uh, any Barnes & Nobles now, folks, and get your hands on the new doubleheader <laughs> book. Just book. wash your hands when you're done. <laughs> Do you get you see what I said there? I said, get your hands on the... Yes, okay. yes, yes. All right. Yes. Well, anyway... <laughs> He continues to say, I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do with whoever I wanted to do it with. You go, brother. It was owning it. He was owning it. It was being me and accepting it and putting them to use. There were situations where people would freak out. What he I can't imagine. I can pee and something else through bottle at the same time. Entering into the uh, you know adult film in industry, I had to edit that, has crossed my mind. I knew people who worked in the adult film industry and some of them knew what I had and they said go for it with and go out with a bang or something like that Get it. <laughs> anyway man with two you know and woman with two you know but they didn't write it well they actually show a picture of the woman she looks like uh, I don't know she looks like the girl next door and, you know anyway. where do you live not to be outdone <laughs> yeah, yeah hello baby not to be outdone earlier this week YouTube star YouTube star it's kind of like what we are. YouTube star and model Cassandra Bankson, they gave us a name on this, revealed that she has two hoo-hahs. Oh, my. Yeah. When visiting the doctor because of kidney pain, the 22, yeah, you're right, kidney pain, the 22-year-old found out she has two rare conditions called uterus, oh, my God, uterus <laughs> diddle It's a good thing the drinking game's not on. I know. Uterus diddle fist, uterus diddle fist. Look it up, guys. I'm not a dictionary, which means she has two hoo-hahs and two wombs. In an interview Barcroft Media with Barcroft Media, Banks had said, and I quote, when she, the doctor, got the papers back, she was looked at she looked at me and she said, Aha! I was like, What? <laughs> Do I have one kidney? 
or do I have two? She was like, yes, and you have two hoo-hahs. And she said, as I expected. Suspect. It's probably like nose. It's probably like the nose, she says. If you could imagine it upside down. <laughs> if you will go away to a dark <laughs> galaxy far, far away and imagine <laughs> this. <laughs> da, 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 da. The woman with two hoo has yeah. That is an epic Star Wars. That's something she, you'd see in Star Wars right now. That, that's like something from, uh, what was the uh, movie oh, with oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger oh. on Mars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Total <laughs> so, Recall. With the woman with three? Total yeah. Total Recall, exactly. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Imagine Jabba the Hutt. He'd be like, ho, ho, ho. Oh, <laughs> wow. Put that in one of those metal bikinis. Anyway, it's probably like the nose the doctor said. If you could imagine it upside down. Everything, like bizarro hoo-ha. <laughs> Everything looks like the same, so I never really noticed a difference, but on the inside, most hoo-ha have this opening, and then everything is one large cavity. For me, there's almost the blank down the middle, just like, you know, a septum in a nose. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if these two ever met. The question is asked. The challenge is on the table, my friend. And a new video on YouTube, which <laughs> will be deleted as of immediately. And, this uh, week, two stars, YouTube stars, go straight to television. Put those on, uh, what's the movie? Naked and Alone. Put those two. <laughs> naked and Afraid. Yes. Naked, yeah, Naked and Afraid. <laughs> Hollywood's getting desperate, man. Getting <laughs> desperate, getting desperate. So anyway, Demon Hunter, it's 737. What do you say we go to our first segment of the night? Sure, why not? Let me see if I can find that segment. G and D show in the news. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. It's always fresh. It's always exciting, strange, and weird. And straight off the G and D show. This episode vaults. is brought to you by. And it starts right now. And it was actually fitting in because you queued up that thing and it had the commercial on. The guy said, "This episode is brought to you." <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to do. That was perfect, man. We've got to start making those ourselves. We do. Uh, actually, I was trying to bring up a news story, and of course, I, I sent you a warning saying that there was an MP3 attached to it. And forgot oh. to check it myself. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, you probably need to give the old drinking game a warning. Oh, that's right. This drinking game is not for my godson, EJ, who's listening right now. Um, but it is for everyone else. That it means... It it's time for the G&D drinking game. That's right, Sean and I picked the news. Weird news right out of the paper. Because we like the titles and we don't read it in advance, which means we make a lot of mistakes. Every time we make a mistake, you take a drink. That's right. We do recommend that if you're listening to this while driving in your car, or if you're planning to do anything important like talk to your loved ones this evening, uh, please listen responsibly. Yeah, first up tonight, can I go? Sure. First up, guys, in this week's strange news from the GD Show Vaults comes from our good friends at the Huffington Post. Thanks, guys. UFO alien abduction still haunts Travis Walton. Do you remember Travis? He's. Uh... I do, and you beat me to that story. Okay, oh. I gotta find another story now. <laughs> so find one real quick. Anyway, Travis Walton, Fire in the Sky fame. Uh, the movie, pretty good movie. Yeah, I liked it. UFO yes, alien abduction yes. still haunts Travis Walton. It goes on to say, Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. That's when a person claims to have been kidnapped by a UFO and it's reportedly otherworldly occupants. Of course, there's no tangible evidence that anyone has ever been taken aboard uh, an extraterrestrial spacecraft. But there are those who claim they have been abducted and their stories are chilling. Yeah, that's, okay. Uh, Travis is pretty bad. To, uh, that story's pretty spooky. Travis Walton's terrifying account is the stuff movies are made from and he joins us actually the movie was made from that he joins Huffington Post and he says to talk about the day 40 years ago when the the then 22 year old logger says he was knocked unconscious and woke up to find he was surrounded by extraterrestrials aboard their ship Ooh. yeah it was metallic glowing disc making some very strange sounds Walton told us the closer I got to it the more scared we all got and they were swearing at me to get away from them and when I got up close, I suddenly got louder and it started to move. I jumped for cover and then jumped up to run back to the truck. And that's <sighs> when this blast of energy hit me. And I just felt this numbing shot go through my body, Travis said. Uh, but the crew said it threw me through the air 10 or 20 feet. 
I guess that's his logger crew. And I landed in a way that they were immediately certain it had killed me. And they fled the scene. The incident began on November 5th, 75, after a long day of work in the Sitgreaves, drink up guys, National <laughs> Forest near Heber, Arizona. Walton and six other loggers were heading home when they suddenly saw a 40 foot diameter shiny disc hovering in the air, Nathan. Shadow Nation. Walton first yes. told his extraordinary tale in the 78, 1978 book, The Walton Experience, which became a 1993 film, Fire in the Sky. His account has just been turned into a candid documentary, Travis, the true story of Travis Walton. Right. Oh, yeah, that rhymes. <laughs> anyway, and then he goes on to have some small video clips. Uh, Walton pictured at the right was declared missing for five days, during which time the logger buddies and all that fell under suspicion of murder. Now, do you remember this story, Fire in the Sky, basically? I remember the story uh, from reading the books when I was a child. Yeah. Well, I um, well, not a child child, but in school, I took the book out of the school library. Yeah, you were and then the movie child. came out years later. Right. And I've watched several interviews with Travis because over the nine years, we've gotten different guests on uh, the top shelf in the paranormal world, Nick Pope. Uh, you know, Steve-O, all these guys, Dr. David Jacobs, um, to talk about aliens and the phenomena and just amazing guests. Uh, but we've never, you know, got Walton on. He's too busy or whatever. So uh, the thing about it, I did see in his YouTube videos, because we always research every single guest. And he did say that in the movie, of course, Hollywood, you know, uh, over... Went nuts, basically, with what happened, because they wanted to add the effect. But as far as the, you know, gray aliens, I don't know if he said they stuck something in his eye or whatever, like in the movie, but he said they looked human. Oh, so he was abducted by Nordic aliens. Nordics! Yeah, I guess. But he said that they, you know, looked more human. He was on a spaceship. He walked around it, seen other, you know, spacecraft, stuff like that. And, of course, Hollywood conveniently cuts out the facts and puts in what they want. So... <laughs> But that's, you know, hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just laughing at how easily we say the guy, the, this man's abduction story, that Hollywood cut out the facts. Yeah. Is... Hollywood cut out the fact that the <laughs> Only man was... we could get away with saying that. The man was actually abducted by aliens, but hey, we're going to cut that out and make it our way. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that was weird. Travis, uh, you know, that reminds me. We've got that gentleman, I forget, names not on my mind right now, but uh, the guy from Brownsburg, Indiana. Uh, they actually put a... Uh, remember last year we were going to get him? He said he was going to come on the show, but he was moving to uh, New Mexico, Roswell. Right, right. And they added a part to the museum just for him. And he got abducted. Now he here stands in, in that museum all day long. That's his job. Hey, yeah, I would do exhibit. it. Yeah, get me a chair. <laughs> kind of like when I went out to Illinois a couple weeks ago, that old man next to Lincoln's tomb. Right. <laughs> he just sat there with his cane. I loved it. God bless him. It's a good retirement job. Yeah. Yeah. I want that job. Well, take it. What's your next story? You got one? My next... I got to read this story, Sean. Do it. So get the bell ready, because you know I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Old hand found in Florida attic with coins and treasure map. <laughs> I had a feeling... I got to read this story. Read it. I'm a pirate fan. I got to right. do it. You're a pirate. Sort of. <laughs> um. You did that. I did not do that. <laughs> so don't you dare... If you ever cleaned your grandparents' attic, you know that you might find something weird up there. Yeah. One Florida family recently discovered that this can include a hand. Yeah. Mike Lopez told Honestly. NBC News affiliate WFIA yeah. that his sister was cleaning out the grandparents' attic when she found a wooden box with a wedding photo and their grandparents, of their grandparents, go ahead yeah, bring them back. Yeah, I'll drink it. A, a Tampa area map, yeah. some coins, and what appeared to be a human hand. Just like Goonies. Arranged inside. Yeah. Okay, let's continue, shall we? Yeah. The map bears the word Gasper. Yeah. And Lopez told WFLA. He thinks it may be uh, connected to the legend of the late 18th century and early 19th century Florida pirate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People can still hear you over that music, you know. 
I didn't know. Sorry. They can't. Jose Gasper, yeah. who was also known as Gasparilla. Oh. Uh, I guess. That sounds like uh, an interesting storyline. Right. Let's continue. There is even an annual festival in his honor. Okay. Despite Gasper's Hoo-ah. place in Tampa area culture and folklore, yeah. there is no proof he was real. Oh. And the myth may have oriented yeah I said that right oriented with Hoo-ah. the railroad company <laughs> advertisement in the late 1800s according to the Tampa Bay Times oh. well the century <laughs> the oh go ahead and hit <laughs> Drink. well that certainly <laughs> is a hand yes. Tampa Bay Historian Center uh, Robert Kite Powell Powers said Okay. In the uh, footage of new, uh, in the news section Stutter, footage, drink. yeah, Kite Powers uh, said that the treasure map is likely a blueprint from a 1920s or 1930s, and that the coins look like the like too thin to be authentic Spanish treasure, or even very old. Arr. Uh, I just don't know what to make this, aside from the fact that it's probably not Jose Gaspar's hand, he said. Oh. Well, the hand appears to be real. Experts uh, have seen it still... Uh, the experts that have seen it are still uncertain. The jury is still out. WFLA reported Jeff Patterson says... Reporter Jeff Patterson says in the video above. And I'll hit my bell one more time there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, um, you're waiting on your bell. You can do your own bell now. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so they found a hand. Uh, a, it's Mayday, Sean. Perhaps it's a hand of glory. <laughs> Give that man a hand. Hoo-ah. Yeah, absolutely. Next one up from the Newser. That's the good friends at the Newser. Mine yeah. was Huffington Post. Oh. Name of the uh, Huffington's. Awesome. Guy makes poor choice in liking a Facebook post. Have you uh, have you seen this idiot? No. Yeah, here we go. All right, here we go. Guy makes poor choice in liking a Facebook post. Pro tip for alleged criminals. If you see your photograph featured as a most wanted suspect on your local Crime Stoppers Facebook page, maybe, I don't know, don't like the post? <laughs> this idiot liked Ooh, uh... his own picture. Thanks. Thanks. Al Pacino. Anyway, uh, Alice, that's his name. Alas. Uh, drink, guys. I'm not sure. Uh, Montana. I'm serious. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. 23-year-old uh, Levi Charles Reardon, both of them, uh, did not heed that advice. And now an arrest that might otherwise have gone unnoticed is getting coverage in places like, oh, France. The Great Falls Tribune reports Reardon was arrested last Friday. And while it doesn't appear that the like is what did him in, it is what's getting plenty of attention. The Cascade County Crime Stoppers posted the photo last month and has since posted a few updates, including a screenshot of Reardon's like. Ha ha, his buddy commented and tagged him in the first place. What a nice friend. LOL. Observed one commentator, uh, he says that uh, the friend replied, If I see someone I know making poor life choices, gotta make sure it's known, plus half the time people don't even know they have warrants or are wanted. To our current knowledge, Mr. Reardon's arrest was a result of an anonymous tip. Crime Stroppers commented in a follow-up. Yeah, I said Stroppers. <laughs> Drink up, guys. The follow-up post, Reardon is suspected of stealing a wallet and personal checks, then making four of the checks out to himself and cash them. Idiot! <laughs> yeah. That's so he got busted by uh, liking himself on Facebook because of his mugshot. Yeah. That's great. What an idiot. Hey, Sean, here's one last one for us before we go on to the next section. Hmm. Greek man convicted of stealing electricity. Okay. Despite being dead. Okay. Oh! Okay. Uh, let's get the bell ready right off the bat because uh, the, the the name of this Greek city, going to get it wrong right now. I apologize to all our fans in Greece right now. Right. Uh, Thessaloniki. Oh, my God. <laughs> Greece. <laughs> Associate Press and Huffington Post. Drink heavy, a yes. Greek court has convicted a dead man of stealing electricity from a power utility, giving him six months, 
suspended jail sentence. Okay. Defense lawyer Christina Bachless told the Thessaloniki <laughs> court that his client was deceased and asked to have Hoo-ah. the trial deferred until he could deliver a death certificate. But the court refused and Tuesday convicted the cli- his client in his absence. Right. <laughs> Thessaloniki <laughs> police drink. <laughs> oh, <wow>. drink! <laughs> Recorded uh, records showed that the 46 year old unemployed father of three died on April 8th. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing at it. Oh, but well, it happens. Ba- Backless wasn't informed until the eve of the trial. Okay. The man was charged last year after um, records. <laughs> <laughs> records showed that his power supply yeah. that had been cut off from the electrical company uh, had continued with unpaid bills. Okay. Um, Bacalus said he was astonished by the court's decision and hadn't expected anything like that, hadn't experienced, have a drink, anything like this in his 25 years as a lawyer. You've so, actually broken bill. Apparently, Sean, you can't take it with you, but you can still be charged for it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, before we close out this week's news, smoke weed every day for 50 years, and this might <laughs> happen to you. Have you seen this? No, I have not. Well, you know, EJ, the... if you're listening, don't believe this story. Don't yeah, believe don't, it. Don't... We mean weeds, like out in the yard, nasty. Yes, yes. Well, we finally a memoir that begs the question: What could your neighbors be smoking? And more importantly, will they share? <laughs> Author Catherine Hiller grew up in New York's Greenwich Village and smoked her first joint in Brooklyn's Prospect Park. Same place as you, Nathan. When she took that first hit, she'd been in training, smoking cigarettes to get the motions right, but she says nothing could uh, prepare her for the euphoria. And she's been unapologetic, hooked ever since. See, you can get hooked on it. Yeah. It was just (laughs) wonderful. Hiller reminisces on this week's Huffington Post Weird News podcast. Huh? I didn't know Okay. It allowed me access... Uh, access to certain thoughts and ideas. Drink, guys. I messed that up. You didn't catch me there. Certain thoughts and ideas that I hadn't had before in her new book, Just Say Yes, a marijuana memoir. (laughs) Hiller chronicles Uh. her adventures in counterculture and challenges preconceived notions about what a pot smoker is is like and you know i yeah whatever um i i agree with that i think marijuana should be legal i think you shouldn't be high at work but uh you know i think the stigma that we put on that is what's caused the uh, kids to want to even do it more opinions about marijuana in the u.s are changing it's now legal for recreational use in four states in washington dc our nation's capital but a lot of americans still might think that smoking weed almost every day for 50 years like hiller would leave you an irresponsible burnout right nathan i would think so maybe for some people that's sadly true but not for her hiller's gotten a lot done in 68 years nathan no uh, you anti-pot smoker probably more than some people it's who, bad for you yes yeah just like smoking cigarettes for i don't know 30 years who've never touched pot uh she's gotten a lot more done than people who never touch pot she's an activist a filmmaker an author and holds a doctorate from brown university she helped well, document it's brown Brown. <laughs> she probably tried to smoke the university. She helped document Woodstock with a film crew, and now she goes to Burning Man. Of course she of does. Of course she does. <laughs> <laughs> she burns the man at Burning Man. Anyway, through all that, she's also raised three boys, and yes, she smoked with them. Oh, Hiller. Oh. You can't admit to that. Uh, well, I guess they're uh, old uh, enough. Uh, anyway, while she's hesitant to label herself a marijuana activist, she admits that writing openly about her love affair with weed has already led to some interesting conversations with her neighbors. Of course. Yeah, I support you, Hiller. That's a good girl. <sighs> you brought this story up just so we'd argue, wouldn't you? I I'm not going to give you the pl- <laughs> pleasure of it. I'm going gonna, gonna to walk away and... Yeah. Uh, Listen, your narrow-mindedness does not work here, sir. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These are high. <laughs> These robots are high, yo! See, yeah. there, there were no real Jedi powers. Those uh, those, peyote, those two yeah. stormtroopers were just stoned, yeah. and so they missed their directive completely. Yeah, and, the Twinkie. Uh, move along, move along. Twinkie hanging out of their mouth. <laughs> anyway, do you know what the next segment is, Demon Hunter? 
I've heard that uh, it regards a certain legend, Sean. Oh, here we go. That's right, guys. You hear the music. It's time once again for another G&D Show original series, where each week, Nathan and myself comb the United States and the world over, and we bring you the latest and greatest in legends, from spook legends to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Snowmen, Bottom Purple, <laughs> Snowmen. Jackalopes. Yeah, <laughs> Jackalopes. Anyway, guys, the best in legends. To find out if there's any truth to it, this week's Legend X is... Huh? <laughs> the Lincoln Ghost. Ah, uh, you remember from what I said, didn't you? Yes, yes, uh, I do. Hey, so- folks, do, do remember, too, that uh, we spend a lot of time trying to find these legends, but if you send us legends, we will follow up on those as well and bring those stories to you. Yeah. Anyway, guys, the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. We just got back with the G&D show trip. We went down there a couple weeks ago, Nathan, if you Woo-hoo. might remember. I do. Got lots of pictures on our Facebook Pretty, page. pretty pictures. Yeah, it was beautiful. Went to Lincoln's house. Went to the historic cemetery. Anyway, like many, and I, I bring this up because today was the first ever reenactment of Lincoln's funeral in Springfield, Illinois. Oh, my. Yeah, I forgot to watch that, actually. I think it's over now. But uh, like many historic cities, and especially one that was called home to Abraham Lincoln for years... Springfield, Illinois, continues to play host to a number of unearthly spirits. The ghost of Abraham Lincoln. While there are a number of spirits who are said to haunt this historic town, the most famous is that of Lincoln himself. According to over a century of legends, Abraham Lincoln continues to lurk around his tomb, now a state historic site in Springfield. I've been there. Woo, we've been there. Sightings of the former president have been told almost since the day his body arrived in Springfield in May 3rd, 1865. On this day, Nathan. Oh my. May 3rd, 1865. After lying in state at the Capitol for a night. You know, that was weird that I pulled this story up. I, I must have subconsciously been thinking of it. I, I totally blew that today was the day. That Thank he, goodness for YouTube. You'll probably get to watch it on there. Yeah, maybe, but... I, I found this story at random for our legend this week. Anyway, that was that was psychic. May 3rd, 1865, after lying in state at the Capitol for a night, the body was placed in a receiving vault. Remember that picture I sent to you? Yes. At Oak Ridge Cemetery. In December, Lincoln's remains were removed to a temporary vault not far from a new proposed memorial site in 1871. Three years after laborers had begun constructing the permanent tomb, the body of Lincoln and those of the three youngest of his sons were placed in crypts in the unfinished structure. The construction of the permanent tomb lasted for years, and it was at this time that the first sighting of a spectral Abraham Lincoln were reported as he wandered near the crypt. Spectral Lincoln. Yeah, spectral, honest Abe. Others would report hearing the sounds of crying and footsteps near the site on the marble floors. In 1874, upon completion of the memorial, Lincoln's remains were interred in a marble sarcophagus. In the center of the chamber known as the catacombs or burial room in 1876. However, after several Chicago criminals broke into the tomb intending to kidnap the corpse and hold it for ransom. However, the attempt failed as one of the men in the gang was a spy for the Secret Service that Lincoln started. Nonetheless, mm. oh, yeah, over the years, the legends have persisted as tourists and staff members report uncomfortable feelings, phantom footsteps, whispers, muffled voices, and weeping. Along with our former president, Oak Ridge Cemetery, also has reports that the apparitions of a small boy and a mysterious woman in a flowing red cape have been seen on the property. My, my, my. Yes. There you go, guys. May 3rd, 1865, the day Lincoln, well, I would say it was finally... Well, you know, with so many sightings of Lincoln's ghost out there by you, maybe that's why he's not seen as often at the White House anymore. I mean, it is quite a commute, even by train. I think he moved uh... out because of Obama. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I can't take this no more, man. Hey, you voted for him, not me. Yeah. How do you know I voted for him? Because you said you voted for him on the show. No, no, I never did. <laughs> I uh, I saved face. I plead the fifth on that, sir. 
<laughs> anyway, Demon Hunter, the hour right, is upon us, my friend. Yeah, I, I never think inhaled. It's time. <laughs> we can't make the man wait. Tonight's guest. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, guys. You hear the music. Tonight's guest. He's an English actor best known for his legendary iconic role as the bounty hunter Boba Fett from the original Star Wars trilogy. He has worked on numerous TV and film projects, including Doctor Who and Robin of Sherwood. Tonight, Mr. Jeremy Bullock is going to be here in studio. He's out in the hall right now. Hey, Jeremy. He'll be in here, guys, in just a few minutes with me and Nathan. So stay tuned for this epic interview, man. Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back. This guy has done it all. Put Sean in the cargo hold. Put him in the cargo hold. He said he, he promised he's going to give us some uh, The Force Awakens, the new story. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, I didn't think he would talk about it, but he said he would. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, I'm ready for you that. You think he knows more than the, all the Star Wars fans that are out there following every line on Twitter and uh, on Twitter? <laughs> on the Twitter? As our buddy on the Dan. Twitter? I'm on the Twitter all the time. Anyway, Demon Hunter, each week we play a new independent band we love, we support. We stand behind him, guys. Tonight's artist, Jeremy Wallace, name of the song, Going Down. We played it before on this show. Demon Hunter. Ghost Man. Shadow Nation. We'll be right back. Yeah, I go down. Yes, I go down. 
Hey, it's Don Wildman from Mysteries at the Museum on Travel Channel, and you're listening to the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show. Hey, welcome back, Shadow Nation, to the one, the only mystifying Oracle Radio, your ghost man and demon hunter show. Tonight's guest, he's an English actor best known for his legendary, iconic role as the bounty hunter Boba Fett from the original Star Wars trilogy. He has worked on numerous TV and film projects, including Doctor Who and Robin of Sherwood. Please help us welcome to the studio, Mr. Jeremy Bullock. Jeremy, what's going on, my friend? I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we have this beautiful weather, um, and it, you just want to go out, and then it'll start raining. Yeah. We have a, a new government will be in within four days' time, you know, so we don't know whether it's conservative, labor, liberal. Right. Are they all controlling that, the that, weather now? <laughs> yes. Well, of course they are. Yes. They, they, they control everything. Yes. So it's a bit of fun, and, and, you know, it's going to be quite serious when it comes up to that, but... I, I forget about that. It, that will take its place, and uh, you know, it's nice to hear from you guys. Well, yeah, Jeremy, I can't tell you how good it is to have you on the show. We've been doing this for nine years, had many stars on of the silver screen, stuff like that. But with you, sir, we both here in studio grew up with you. <laughs> you're yeah, like our. I, know. I you're was li- about 106. <laughs> <laughs> how was Abraham Lincoln? I, you know, no, you're not that old. You, you're all over the place. Big news in the Star Wars world. Uh, shook the very foundation. You just got out, well, what, last month? You were in Anaheim for the Star Wars Anaheim, celebration. Anaheim, yes, the big celebration. That, that was incredible. That was really, everyone was very buzzy and, you know, very excited about the new film. And I think I think it's going to be good. I've not seen anything, but, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the new one back right. on track. You, well, almost- you, know, you know, one of my uh, best friends called, uh, not Sean, the other best friend. I have two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Imaginary. Two, that's about it. Uh, but he called and said, you're going to have Boba Fett on your show? <laughs> and he, he had to ask, since he saw a glimpse of Boba Fett's armor in the uh, new, new previews, uh, if you were going to be in the new films. He can't tell you. No, no, not as I know. I, I wouldn't. I, I, don't forget Boba Fett's in the Sarlacc pit. Yeah. Yeah. He can't, he can't get out just yet. I mean, He, he didn't he, blast his way out? No, well, it, it, <laughs> he, it has this thousand-year death. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it look as old as me when that happened. Oh. Oh. But that, that, again, you know, it's, it's quite exciting for people to think what's happening. I mean, Boba Fett, Sarlacc pit... He's got plenty of money that he's been dealing with, and he opens up a couple of restaurants. Yeah, um, you know, to keep him going, wine bar, cantina. You know, he could do it all. So it's called, it, it, it's called the pits. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, the pit, the Sarlacc. But uh, you know, I'm I'm very excited about it. You know, as a fellow actor with all the people, you know, there, there'll be new people, I'm sure, in it. Uh, and I don't know anything about it at all, and most of us don't. They don't know the actual story. Or, or anything. So this is going to be December, and you know, very excited to to wait for it. Really, I'm I'm very happy with what's going on. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, when Sean and I first uh, sat down in the studio here, we, I looked over and I was like, "Dude, for the first time in a long time, <laughs> I'm nervous." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I'm not a nervous person normally, and, and I, I remember one of my uh, the early scenes. Um, just coming in and saying, I'm Boba Fett. You know, just a little bit. I sound, oh, I sound strange there. I feel quite nervous. Yeah. Um, but having acted since I was 12 years old, you should now have confidence without being too confident. But that, <clears throat> my opening day on Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, I was very, very nervous. Because yeah. you think I'm going to cock it up. And it's, <laughs> gonna happen. it's just not, not me help maybe I shouldn't do this. You know, it runs through your head. But yeah. I, I suddenly say, talking to myself, I said, look, I'm an actor. Get on stage and get on with it. Mm. And then suddenly you're in the flow of it and uh, George Lucas was very nice and he said, welcome aboard. And I said, thank you. And, and But I didn't have a huge amount to do. At least it's still the smallest part I've ever played. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, everybody asks you, Jeremy, the same thing because your uh, character is iconic. I mean, you see your face. You see Star Wars. Um, But I want to know the man behind the mask. I know a little bit about you growing up. You know, you you failed a school exam. So you were not an A student and you went into (laughs) acting. (laughs) Tell us a little more about that. What? Well, it's a thing. It got to the part where um, it was what we call an 11 plus exam. So you're going to see where you're going to go after your early years at school. Yeah. And, you know, it's just that I couldn't quite get hold of it. I, I was doing an English essay and then this, that, this. And I thought, oh, God, this is going to be dreadful. Here I am, barely 11 years old, and I'm not doing terribly well. Yeah. And I remember the English teacher coming in. We did the exams. The English te- teacher came in. And was smiling at me, and I'm thinking, oh, looks like my results are good. He walked over to me very slowly, leant forward, and he said, Bullock, you may have lovely writing, but you have failed again. (laughs) Now, that reminded me of an old Dickensian character. Yeah. Dick and stuff. And I thought, oh, dear. Well, the amazing thing is, within six weeks, I was in drama school. Oh, wow. And I still, to that day, it was my mum and godmother that sort of pushed me forward to go to school in London and just see what happens and you know obviously you've had bad reports and it's not brilliant but I used to dance and sing and have have fun like so that's how quickly it happened and I was probably very lucky in the end I thought you were going to tell me your teacher said you have failed me for the last time general (laughs) (laughs) yeah I could have said that (laughs) of course course Star Wars wasn't born then that's true I've got that memory well it all works out I mean, you know, you're in school, you're doing your thing, and, and who would have thought? I mean, you never had any uh, of these illusions that you were going to be a great movie star and on the big screen and everything when you were a child. Uh, th- th- what kind of movies did you watch and grow up on? What kind of things well, did you I, love? I, I used to watch anything that was sort of adventure, so, something slightly sci-fi. Yeah. I can't remember. And there was the, the creature from the, that, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, I remember yeah. seeing that. My brother and I are going to watch and going, oh, it's scary, help. <laughs> um, but those were the things I did. My, my dad used to take us to the cinema and just something that was sort of, you know, bad guys against good, but yeah. gentle. Today, I think, I have to say, I think it's too violent, half the stuff that's out now. Oh, so, yeah. You know, says, the man, says the man who froze poor Han. And, <laughs> yeah, it was a bad day. It was just a bad day. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's another thing, Jeremy. I mean, you know, you're talking about growing up. You started with uh, a lot of the um, plays you did, musicals and things like that on stage. You did a lot of live theater, right? Yes, yes. And I did what I did what they call, I mean, you'd go on tour. They say the producer of this particular theater company um, would like to see you about doing a 14-week tour around England. And I sort of did, and then I started doing a load of these tours. And then finally, well, he was said, God, but I mean, you'll st- keep doing these same plays. You, you won't get any work, you know. Fellow actors sometimes can be quite cruel. <laughs> and I said, no, I said, it'll, it'll happen, don't worry. And then suddenly out of the blue, they said, well, oh, they want you to do this play in the West End. Mm-hmm. And it, was a, it was a three-hander. And I was in it for a year. And and it was th- probably the best thing I ever did, called Dangerous Obsession. And it was a, a thriller, but, uh, you know, quite... You, you could feel the audience really going... <gasps> and breathing <laughs> in suddenly, because it was quite nasty, right. the whole thing. But it, 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 the variety you do is best. I mean, I did a musical, um, musical film called Summer Holiday, and that was great fun, dancing and singing with, you know, one of the top pop singers, Cliff Richard. Right. Um, we, I had a, a very good thing, and when suddenly it took off, where for three or four years I was never out of work, and I was lucky. But I was still did the thing which I remember saying, "I've got to do other jobs as well. I can wait tables. I can do that. Right. I can also paint. Somehow I could just pick up a paintbrush and paint people's houses, and so I did that when I was out of work because that's what you have to do. That's what I was going to ask you. That was some of your jobs. Boba yep. Fett painted homes and waited tables. And a lot of people do that, Jeremy. I mean, it's so weird to hear you say that because I would have thought, you know, and not that you're ancient, but nothing changes. <laughs> Nearly, <yeah. laughs> but nothing changes with the acting. 
gigs. I mean, I, we talked to the guys that have been out in L.A. and they're like, man, when we came here, we had to clean people's trailers and sweep the floors. And at night we went to acting school and this and that. And it was the same with you. You had to come up through the hard knocks. No, you have to come through. And, and I remember the times, you know, going back to waiting tables, you'd um, go and say, is there, sir, is there anything else I can get for you? Just get this the bill. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, you no, know, sorry, it wasn't American. No. <laughs> get, us the bill. get us the bill. Go on. And, and oh, sure. When it's America, said, they're rude. Yes. But when well, it's they're, British. They're rude in, they can be rude in England. That's why you don't see many English waiters anymore. They're right. all foreign. You know, because yeah. they don't mind saying, good evening, hello, how are you? Welcome to our restaurant. Right. You know, it, it, during the time that I was doing it, there were some pretty rude people, but you, you just have to go, oh, well, I'm, what you're doing is you're performing. You can say, good evening, welcome, madam, sir, you know, wonderful to see you. Now, what I can recommend today is the the Rhone, the Cote de Rhone, and it's beautiful. And so I did a sort of 20-minute performance, and, right. you know, it had to be good, otherwise I'd get blamed. <laughs> some, you know, normally it would, you know, you'd sort of say, and then I came away thinking, rather like doing a play. I thought, actually, I was quite good tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Remember well, to put on a owner, smile. It's part of your costume. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> the, the owner would come up and say, very well done, Jeremy. Thanks a lot. Very nice tonight. But it could go the other way when they'd say, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, nothing. I'm just waiting. Well, just stand. Look, you're, you look bored. Well, of course I'm bored. But at least, you know, when the customers come in, I can perform. And it's not about performing. It's about selling the food. Yeah. So, you know, you have to go through all that as well. But you do have the really good days. And then the ones, days you just want to go and have a beer and just say, I don't want to do this anymore. Now. So, suddenly it stopped. I, d I don't know why. It's when I got a run of work and I didn't do it anymore. Went back to decorating. Yeah. And so far, luckily for the last 15 years, I haven't been decorating. <laughs> apart from my own house. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty <laughs> of projects around the house if you're married. That's for sure. Yeah. The Boba Fett's married. Boba Fett. Boba Fett is married. Boba Fett is married. He's always been married since, I tell you what, 1970. I've been married 44 years. Now. Oh, my God, man. Congratulations. How do you well, do it? No, she's a, she has an absolute cracker. I mean, she was a former model. Oh. Marine, and uh, she, uh, I met her in Malta. They were doing a photo shoot, you know, of all the different um, costumes and things that the models wear. And um, she's absolutely cracking. Well, ha it hasn't been it hasn't been forty four years of absolute bliss. It's been forty four years of hard work. So when did you guys you meet? Know, Nineteen what? Nineteen seventy. Nineteen. Oh, well, I was going to say, when did you hit her with the "I'm the Boba Fett"? But that would have been before. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do the. You know, yes, it would have been before. <laughs> I didn't do that. But I, it, what it was was I was came up by the seaside like this, and there's some models doing doing a shoot. And then I said, remember leaning forward, I said, be careful. Um, there's a slight edge on the, the corner here. You could cut yourself. And as I said, I thought, what a terrible line. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, uh, and one of the girls said, oh, he was in The Newcomers. It was a soap opera for three years. Right. He said, he was in The Newcomers. She said, well, I don't watch television. Oh, so that no. Was, that was a killer for a start. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, that was a funny start. There goes your credentials. We, been here ever since. Yeah, well, Same. you know, in Sorry. 1978, you're starring in the television comedy Agony, and yeah. so you already kind of know about Star Wars New Hopes out there. Oh, yes, I, I you know, that, that was, I thought, this sounds like quite a fun, you know, like a space, spaceships and things, so that, that, that would be fun. Were you a fan of it, though, when it first came out? No, I was a fan of it, because, mainly because my eldest brother is on the production side, and he was involved with that first film. And Mr. Watts. How did he go? <laughs> Robert Watts. Is that was going to be my next question. Do those he, guys get in there and say, uh, hey, uh, brother, do you have anything going on? <laughs> yeah. Did that yeah, help he out? Did, he didn't think of it at all, because it's something I would never do. Um, say, hey, any chance of a day on here? But he did come out of the blue and just said, there's a couple of days on this second film, Empire Strikes Back. You know the first one. I said, yes, I haven't seen it yet. Must see it. 
But it happened very quickly because I then got another play, <laughs> another theatre play. But luckily, by sheer luck, I managed to do both, film during the day and dash to the theatre at night. Wow. So I had two jobs going at once. And that was really, that was hard work. That was two weeks of non-stop making sure, because if I didn't turn up for the play or, or was late, then I would be in serious trouble. But luckily, everything worked out. Wow. And that, there I was and put the outfit on, and they said, well, looks good, Jeremy. Well, welcome aboard. It's not a big role, but uh, <laughs> nice, nice, to, nice to see you. Yeah. So there was a lot of fun things. I met Mark Hamill and Carrie, uh, but never met uh, Harrison Ford. Really? There was no scene where you see, you, in the carbon freezing chamber, you see you see him going down there and there's Boba Fett standing in the background and but there was no actual meeting or, or I did actually say hello and he said hi well you must be yeah pretty hot in that outfit that's all we said that's <laughs> the only time I, that's well that's weird because you he feared you the most I remember in Return of the Jedi he's going Boba Fett talking to Chewie Boba Fett and you were getting ready to blast him right before you went in the yeah. pit yeah that's, yeah, that's right. That's Because there's all there were stunt men involved as well. There was um, one stunt guy who got his ankle twisted and oh. doing the fall because they, you know, because of where you, I couldn't have done those falls. Well, I could have done, but they, they'd rather have stunt men because they're trained to do that. And you could have done the fall once. Well, I, I think I could have done the fall. <laughs> I was 30 years old, still very fit. And I think you possibly could, but there are people who are trained much better than I am to, oh, do, yeah. to do that. But all in all, it was a lovely call. At a, I mean, I just had such a super time. And then being asked back, would you come back and do Return of the Jedi? Oh, my God. And, and Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Yeah, then, 20, again. then 22 years later, you find yourself on the Star Wars set again as Captain Colton. Yes, I know. that They just said... Would you like to, George wants to know whether you'd like to come and play. It's not a very big part, but, you know, would you like to do it? Did you like so people I, seeing your face this time? On yeah, this? I think <laughs> some people might have been shocked. But, um, <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a lovely feeling. And, you know, when they said, would you, would you come along and George would like you to do this? And it didn't take very long. It took a day. And, um, you know, back on the thing again. And it, it's so lovely to see people say... Thank you for coming back, Jeremy, to Anaheim. You know, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. You know, we're really looking forward to the new film. Hope you have a good weekend. And it was a wonderful four-day weekend. You had to be tuckered Just, um, out. Meeting up with old friends and the technicians. And it was a, a real ball. You now, know, when you were back on the set, did they let you try the new armor on? <laughs> <laughs> the new, new armor. No, there was, no, I haven't been on the set yet. Oh, no, when you went back for Revenge of the Sith. Oh, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, no, there's no suit. I just had a very strange outfit and earphones around my head. Um, it, it was just, you know, just saying, would you like to do it? Thanks a lot. And, you know, I went on the set. And a lot of the crew I knew before I, on other productions, but also um, from Return of the Jedi. So it was nice to see them, and they said, Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Goodbye. Hope to see you soon. And then yeah. I'm off. I've gone back home. and uh, To a planet far, far away. <laughs> far, Our far galaxy. Away. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, i got to ask you, because I'm a baby of the 75. I was born in 1975, so I came in right after the... Uh, you know, the New Hope I seen on videotape, which people don't know yeah, what that is anymore. Yeah. And then I remember Mom and Dad taking me to see The Empire Strikes Back. And Return of the Jedi. Now, let me tell you something. When I went into that cool, dark theater for Return of the Jedi, and the darkness of space reached out across the theater, and then you heard the hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> I mean, I can remember right now, Jabba the Hutt's laugh, my hair standing up, and then you see oh, yes. Boba oh, Fett. Oh, oh, oh. You're all cool. You're in the corner with your arms crossed. You just give a little nod. You know, what? what was... What is that like, being on set and talking to a gigantic puppet like Jabba the Hutt or something? Well, I, I was talking to several, of, well, there were several actors in the tail and the tongue, <laughs> doing the tongue and the slime of Jabba the Hutt. Right. And Mike Edmonds, who was in the film, he was controlling the tail, so it was lashing every now and then, so it looked very much alive. Right. And I used to get in there in the morning and say, 
Hello, Mike, how are you? And he said, oh, good morning. He said, could you get me a cup of tea? I said, no, I'm busy, sorry. <laughs> so I started to play the part of Boba Fett, rather arrogant. <laughs> and, uh, you know, lots of funny things happened, but uh, the jab of the hut thing, you, you just stood absolutely still. And the thing is with Boba Fett, when you, if you look at the, de- the, the detail in the costume, you actually, I don't have to do anything <laughs> rather than just stand there. Right. That's all I have to do is stand. It's far more menacing than running about with a gun saying, I'm Boba Fett, get out of the way. You know, that doesn't happen. It's the subtlety with the, you know, and anybody donning the cape and the, and the costume, that's all you have to do, just stand in the background. Right. The, uh, I remember years ago in okay. acting school, they, they would make us do whole, like, scenes wearing a mask so that we would learn to not, not depend on our facial uh, features to show what we were feeling, our expressions. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that must be, the, you're putting on that helmet and you're just like looking in the mirror going, how can I look as badass as possible? Okay, I'm just going to stand, stand here. Stand here. Arms here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember I used to say that. I had to have a dress it because you can't put it on yourself. It's very extremely difficult. And I remember just putting it down and then the very first day I was shoving stuff underneath my helmet and they said what are you doing you're going to meet George Lucas I said yes I'm, I'm aware of that he said well what are you doing putting that stuff under your helmet I said well it's my hair isn't it he said no it's a Wookiee scalp <laughs> I said, oh I see sorry I, uh, I didn't know no one told me oh. and so I finally I could never put the costume on without help and yeah and you'd have the dresser saying, right, come on, Jeremy, we've got to do this within 30 minutes, the whole thing. But, and it used to take about 30 minutes, and then down to about 20, towards the end of filming, I was, it was getting easier to do. Yeah. So what was it like out there? Uh, like Jabba's Palace and stuff, who knows? That was on a set somewhere in Hollywood, probably. That, that, was, that was in, um, in England, that set. Okay. Um, huge. I mean, vast set and a wonderful... You know, the whole area of Jabba's Palace, and you had so many characters, different ones, still moving and jumping around. And Well, it had to be big pe- to fit the Rancor. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't, you didn't... I never saw that, of course. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but, but it was, um, you know, a terrific set, and it came across looking quite nasty. Now, what do you say, Jeremy, being part of the original trilogy that made this franchise, what do you say to the folks out there that say Lucas... Uh, and we love George Lucas, but what do you say to those people with the last three, with Lucas saying that he tried to kill the trilogy with all the CGI and taking the puppets I out and stuff like what, that? What's happened is I think some people have got too blistery. They've gone blistery. That's a funny word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> blistery. So come in and say, oh, no, I didn't like that. I didn't like the new films. They were a load of rubbish in it. Well, I think they've been terribly unfair, but it hasn't been everybody. I, I don't think they're as good as the original trilogy, right. but they're still... My grandchildren prefer watching the new ones than, than the old ones. They right. said, can we watch that bit again, the, one, the bit that you're in? I said, well, no, that's, that's the other films. That's, Granddad's not in that. I'm not Boba Fett. No, but that, that's nice. I like the story. So, yeah. you know, you, you're getting a lot of... Um, little ones sort of interested in the new ones right rather than the old ones so and they, they're now watching empire strikes back but it's taken a lot to right. persuade them but you know i think they've been really unfair i don't you know as i said before i don't think they're quite as good as the the, the old ones the original i agree but um you know give give people a chance now no. we we the force awakens Yes. You know, I think it's a great title, and I think um, I, I'm really looking forward to and where we are, December, not long to go. Yeah. I think it'll be, I think it'll be a cracker. Oh, it's going to be nuts. And, you know, the thing is, everybody was coming down on J.J. Abrams. They're coming down on Disney because it's a regime change, and it is spooky. Nobody wants to see Mickey Mouse and the magic stuff coming out, and then Star Wars, you know. You've always seen LucasArts. It's hard because you grew up on this, so... You know, you don't, and some people go crazy. They're like, you ruined my life! But, uh... Yeah, yeah so, I mean, people got far too serious about the whole thing. They do. But, but, you know, what they've done, they've made costumes for themselves, and you see them at Anaheim. They've arrived in a magnificent outfits. 
Yeah. And they've spent all this money and all this time sewing things up, making it look a replica of maybe Boba Fett's costume, yeah. even the Chewbacca. You know, it, it's incredible. It's amazing. They, they've worked, worked so hard. So now we've got to say, new film, here we go. Well, that's what they're saying with J.J. Abrams, because it looks like Disney and Abrams got together. Who's directed the? Uh, well, I think they have to because it's uh, it's really Disney's property. Now. Right. I mean, that's that's what you have to go for. But well, um, he's brought back a lot of the old school puppets, the old school Lucas methods from the original trilogy that you were yes, in. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's Did, what's uh, going to be a big hit. Now, what you were oh. talking about your grandkids before when Episode Two came out and they saw it. Did they go, Granddad? Is that what you looked like when you were a little boy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they with little Boba when, Fett when they, when they were that young. But I didn't let them. See, I didn't let them see it because it was a bit scary. Yeah, yeah. Until they got to about six or seven. So, but they enjoy it. They enjoy it now and then. Occasionally, especially the younger ones. I mean, I do have a twenty-four-year-old granddaughter. So, <laughs> you know, I think she's she's wise to it at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I mean, remember years ago, I was uh, when when the company Priceline, the ticketing company, first opened. I helped set up their mail room, and I think it was Jay Walker who was one of the founders of Priceline. Had a life size Boba Fett in his office, and you know, it was my first time seeing something like that. And do you think it's a little creepy that people keep life size statues of you in their homes, staring at <laughs> well, them all the time? Well, <laughs> I, I have one here, like a Buddha, in my office. Do you? I, I, I've dressed things around it, around his neck, and the kids come up and look at it. But it's a solid. But I modelled for it many years ago uh, because they were setting up and selling these massive, big statues. So in the end, I got one, and it's it's can be creepy if you try and come up here or just fall forward and probably make a noise. Now I've collected a few little toys and things like that, and. Nice, really good artwork from the artists around Star Wars. How does it so, know if but, you? How does it feel if you sign an action figure? It's worth thousands now, huh? <laughs> well, there's there's the guy in in England, eighteen thousand pounds. Yeah, uh, I know who the guy is. He's just bought this thing for eighteen thousand pounds. Jeez! A huge headline in in the papers here. I said, "What are you doing?" Well, I mean, to myself, <laughs> I said, "What is he doing?" But you know, someone else will. Buy that off him in a few years' time. It'll be worth more. Right. And it's a lot of. And you're stuff. up in your office signing as many of them as you can. <laughs> no, no, I'm not actually. It's, it's very rare that I do. But right. um, you you sign. You know, people ask for certain pictures. Have you got them? And I said, well, I have to order them because they're all licensed. Right. You know, so there are. But I wrote a book as well called Flying Solo, and that's I've just come virtually come to the end there were 2,000 copies worldwide that I, I sold and that's it as soon as and it's just been recently now that finally that's the end of the books I, I might do some other thing later but the actual 2,000 copies have now sold out you mean we can't get it yeah. well you can <laughs> you can look into it there may be the odd ones left but the 2,000 copies uh, have gone, but th we may be doing something that we have some leftover 12 people, because some people say, I want that uh, book, you know, <laughs> as bad right. as that, they say, I want it. I want that book, and they never come back. Right. Oh. So there's a few there, there's like five or six and things like that, but um, but it's really right right at the end now, and um, it's been good fun, but it's been, been tough work. You know, we believe, Jeremy, on this show, you have to give to get back. And yeah, we support a lot of, you know, oh, breast cancer awareness and uh, the SYL project here on the show. We do our very best to make these things um, known on our show and to help get support for them. And you, sir, not only are you the most, you know, bad, bad uh, character on Star Wars, just an <laughs> awesome, awesome character. But what makes you really awesome is my eyes is that you feel the same way. You've done several charities and also with David Prowse. Darth Vader, Michael Schurd, yeah. you guys did an independent Order of the Sith was the name of it for the Save the Children. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, that's a, a long time ago, and I remember we all got involved um, with, you know, several different charities. Um, and f funny enough, my my granddaughter was um, had a brain tumor last year, oh my. and had one of the top. He, he was he was from Iran, mm -hmm. um, and went to, from Sri Lanka where my son was working 
and um, and it was quite a nasty thing. But he said, "You've made me very tired, little one, but it's all clear." And oh wow! It was wow. just like the biggest relief. And I, I wore the costume again. <laughs> yes. Uh, a year ago to raise money, so people would put money in the bucket for for the Great Ormond Street Hospital, which is all charity. It's the most incredible people working there, and that. That's been fantastic. That was the best feeling ever. Blessed on that. that. You know, and um, people would have a photograph taken with me in the outfit, cause, ah. because I do have a replica um, outfit. And I wore it there and sat there, and people would have a photograph done with you, and you'd say, thanks a lot. And then they'd donate the money and put it in a bucket, and they raised a, a, a lot of money. So that was terrific. Wow. Now, Boba Fett's a villain, but everybody loves him. Why do you think he's so yeah, popular among the fans? Well, they love him because he's, he's good at his job. <laughs> you know, and he just says, don't mess with me. You know, I'm a straightforward bloke. Mm -hmm. um, vir virtually, I think, in life as well. I'm very straightforward and just, well, thanks a lot for coming and do this and do this. Thanks a lot. Um, he's, he's a badass, but the best. Yeah. Now, before the show, you were saying how much you worship American football. <laughs> when did you last learn to read? Yeah, I know. I know, right? Uh, so you, who's your favorite team out there? Team Tottenham Hotspur. Okay. Yeah, they're not doing too bad. They've sort of pulled back up, then they drop down again. But there's, uh, they're not going to win the league. But right. um, Cricket season starts soon, so that's even better. Yeah, you're a big cricket uh, enthusiast. You've played quite a bit of cricket. Did you play in school? I played at school, yes, and I played outside that. And then my one of my sons is an extremely good player. Yeah, he gets the ball to move very early in the in the air, and then off the seam of the ball, and not you'd understand that. <laughs> no, I get it. He's, I... <laughs> he's, he's good. Hey, have you noticed the United States and the soccer thing have been taking off here lately, huh? Yeah, it's it's much better, but you still, as they say, they're still not going to have, you know, so many footballers or, so, sorry, soccer players <laughs> in, in America. Because it's, the, the main game is American football. I, I like watching it. It's not yeah. my scene, but it's quite fun watching it. Right. Well, we gave you guys a run for your money this year, or the World Cup last yeah. time. <laughs> Anyway, Jeremy, you know, I, I could sit here and ask you questions all day. The thing about your character and you, and you were talking, we were talking earlier about how a lot of the Star Wars fans go overboard, and they, and some of them do. That's what I said. Um, because some people were saying, you know, I hate my life. I can't believe this new Star Wars lightsaber is, uh, <laughs> what was the guard you call it, Nathan? The, the hilt. The hilt. Oh, I can't believe it. You've ruined the whole thing for me. But for me, with you, Jeremy, on the silver screen, I remember my dad. My mom being a kid watching these shows, and that's something that I passed on to my kids. And what does it feel like being a part of that, man? Well, I, I, I feel you know, you know, I feel great about it. I get asked to go to many, many places. I mean, all around the world. I was playing football with Argentinian kids. I went to Buenos Aires, and I said, "Oh, you think you can play football? Give the ball here." And I was flicking the ball up and pulling it down, and then they. This child who was about eight just took the ball off me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was embarrassing. So, you know, b b being able to travel, I've, luckily I've traveled with my work over the, over the years, over the last 40 odd years. And I've gone everywhere. And now with the, these events here, they said, would you go along to, to this event? And it used to be Darth Vader, Boba Fett. The first two people they want are those two. Yeah. yeah. If you go to any convention or they set it up, they say, we'd like you to come. And it's it's either Darth Vader or Boba Fett. Yeah. Well, those are the two yeah, most which iconic. Is amazing. Incredible. Well, Nathan, do you have any more questions? Because I could go on all day. I could go on for hours just with the convention talk. Yeah. Oh, it's... Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. You're next. Put him in the cargo hold, Boba. Do it. Do it. As you wish. <laughs> okay. Well, All right. Now I now I can die. Yeah, you can <laughs> die happy. Well, uh, guys, I've got to go now. Unfortunately, it's for coming on. Well, thank you for a decent interview because people try to say 
Is it true you broke your knee on this, which I didn't, but right. you know, they'd, they'd come out, they record it and come out with complete bilge. <laughs> okay, brother. take it. Have a great day. It was, only, it was near the end. Yeah, <laughs> that was it, buddy. It's almost well, over for you. A different country. We'll speak very soon. All right. You, Talk to you soon. Take Bye-bye. care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bobo Fett, baby. And, and I'm speechless. First time in history. Speechless. <laughs> I don't know what to say. After nine years on the air, we never cease to amaze me. <laughs> what do you say we close out the show? All right, let's pay some bills. Special thanks to actor Jeremy Bullock. Bobo Fett from the Star Wars trilogy. You hear the music, Demon Hunter. It's time. It is that time. Special thanks to all our homes, all our sponsors, Stitcher, Smart Radio, Planet Paranormal, Action Audio Abs. Hey, are you listening? They want to know, so check them out at actionaudioabs.com. Creative Commons, Free Music Archives, and Midnight Syndicate. Thanks for the tunes. Be sure to check out the SYL Project, SYLproject.com. Today, spread some love. From the haunted backroads of America, this has been another exclusive GD show interview. Maybe one of our best. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm, I am, uh, I'm, I'm giddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm giddy, giddy so. like a schoolgirl. Hey, don't go change in America. You know we won't. Demon Hunter. Because we love you. We love you. We do. Night, guys. <laughs>